bit of a breather today ahead of earnings next week. Some of the semiconductor trade down as well. Let's look ahead with Craig Warnemont joining us, CIO at Venture Visionary Partners. Uh, Craig, welcome to the show. Tell me about what your guys' vision is right now, particularly where AI fits in. Great. Well, obviously, uh, AI has been popular for a long time, and so this is not a new idea to anyone. Uh, taking a look through NVIDIA, though, and if you go back a few years ago, they were the hottest uh, chip company because they had uh, the best graphic chips for gaming, and then that, that idea became old. Then they had the fastest chips for cryptocurrency mining, then that idea got old. And today, obviously, the, the king of the AI uh, chip race. So uh, the company has found a way to uh, reinvent themselves, continue to innovate uh, more so than rent, uh, reinvent so that they remain on top of the next hot tr trend. Um, so that's what we like about them is their ability to uh, stay in front of the rest of the, of the co competition. Uh, in your definition or along your spectrum of uh, vision and tech, where does the crypto and the Bitcoin stuff fit in? NVIDIA had some history back in the day when they were powering all that mining. Yes, absolutely, they did. And uh, that's what got them on the radar screen of a lot of retail investors, more so than institutional uh, early on back back in those days. Um, so uh, AI, you know, people can talk about something being a fad or overhyped. And um, there will be a, a period where it looks like there was a whole lot of hype and not a lot of uh, action. But just like uh, the Internet, um, you know, went through a phase where uh, we thought it'd be everything. And then people said six months later, wow, I haven't changed my life yet. Uh, and now 20 years later, you look back and just about everything you do today revolves around it. Uh, I think that the, uh, the time frame for AI mass adoption will be substantially quicker. But NVIDIA and others are, are probably still vulnerable to a bit of a pullback when people look and say, you know, life hasn't changed much in three or six months, so maybe this was overdone. Okay. Uh, where do you think the bar is at right now for uh, growth versus profitability? Do you think NVIDIA still gets a pass to basically pursue growth at every measure and sort of by connection? I guess maybe a question that applies more to some of the hyperscalers that are buying all their stuff hand over fist. Right. And, um, you know, NVIDIA and a lot of the hyperscalers are actually pretty profitable. So that's another big difference between the last time everybody got very nervous that tech valuations were overdone and a lot of companies were not profitable yet. So uh, things stack up a little better this time. But I'm sure there will be another pullback. You know, you go on on shows, it's like you put your neck back on the chopping block every time uh, you, you reiterate or say that you still own something with, uh, you know, 25% or so upside uh, to our price target for NVIDIA. Uh, but these, these stories don't play out in a straight line, but they do play out very well over the long term. How much does the NVIDIA halo uh, envelop other names? Uh, should it still be a pretty concentrated pick by investors or can we branch out? I mean, we're looking at some of these fall by the wayside here today. Uh, Super Micro keeps getting hit. A lot of folks expected AMD uh, to catch up, never really has. List goes on. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Um, so the Mag7 nickname took off and then uh, people shrunk that to uh, Super 6 or Fab 4 as, as certain components started to die out. And what I've really been excited about though is that uh, halo effect to those those other names you know one one of our best performing stocks this year is app love and and uh, that's not getting a lot of publicity probably more now than a year ago um but the that second and third tier um uh player where they're not the one making the ai chips they're the ones making a profit by implementing ai chips that's where we're excited about for the next frontier all right. Uh, case uh, well made for NVIDIA. One of the other ones you like uh, in the category of that Fab Four is Meta. Stock price certainly has been quite fabulous. Uh, you guys think this thing could get close to 800 bucks? Yeah. In fact, you know, our, our price target, they always say, um, is, a, is a mix of, of art and science. So our 780, uh, it seems like the, the market tends to move things too far in each direction and the market likes round numbers. So you know, when when you put out a target like 780, if if it turned out to to 800 in 12 months, we'd we'd consider that a, a win. Uh, those two are close enough. When things get really overdone, though, the market starts to look for round numbers that are a lot higher. And so, you know, if it hit a thousand in that 12 month period, um, I, it's it's always hard to ring the cash register and and lock in a profit. But at some point, everything becomes overdone. 
Uh, my, my point in talking about the price target for these two in particular, though, is uh, people talk about the easy money already being made when they look at something up 100 percent or or a few hundred percent. And it was never easy the whole way up uh, early goings. You're the only one sticking your neck out saying it could go a lot higher. And so you're nervous the whole way up. And then as it's getting a little closer, but you still have 25, 35 percent left to go. Uh, like I said, you're putting your neck back on that chopping block every day, hoping that uh, that it's not the day that you go through a three week pullback like uh, mid July to early August. And and, uh, you know, the maybe the headlines uh, calling for the demise of, of the, the tech boom were a little premature then. But sooner or later, there will be another uh, pullback that lasts longer than three or four weeks. Yeah, true. All right. Uh, right now, the stock looking pretty good. So uh, hold the line, it seems. Thanks, Craig. Appreciate your thoughts.